Alright, today's project we have an R404 Frankie double wide grill freezer. And the complaint was it's not getting cold whatsoever. Um, now when I got here, this unit was in the back room, not plugged in, so I haven't verified any symptoms myself yet other than it is an R404 system and not an R290 like I initially expected. So, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is double check that condensing coil, make sure we're clean, and then start pulling some panels off. Back side looks clear. That's easier. Yeah, it's not too terrible. I can see through it, so at this point, um, it is kind of dirty, but at this point, that's clean enough for me to at least verify symptoms of the, other than a dirty condensing coil. So um, let's plug it in and see what happens. Compressor came on, condenser fan is moving air. It's moving a good amount of air too. That coil is definitely just greasy and yucky though. That'll have to be cleaned out. Alright, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to pull this panel off right here. Take all those screws out of the perimeter. I'm going to pull that out and uh, start getting some amp draws of my compressor. I don't hear anything odd yet. It doesn't sound like it's short cycling. Compressor doesn't sound loud. There's no squealing, hissing, anything. I can uh, even come up with uh, uh, an idea of what could be happening yet. So let me get this panel pulled off, see what I can see, and we'll bring it back in just a minute. So here we are at floor level getting a bird's eye view of this condensing unit. Now, right now, you can see back here, but I'm just feeling the side, the suction side of my compressor. The head of it is pretty cool. My discharge is nice and warm. Everything looks good. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. There's sight glass here, though. Our sight glass has some bubbles every once in a while. Now, I haven't confirmed the airflow in my evaporator yet, so that'll be our next step. So my bubbles will come on strong like this, then they kind of dwindle out to maybe one or two bubbles flashing through there, almost as if the TXV is hunting, just opening and closing rapidly. So, let's go around front. We'll investigate this uh, airflow inside the evaporator. All right, so I just came around front here to check my airflow in my evaporator, and it appears oops, it appears we have reached set point. We went from ambient temperature down to negative five in about four minutes. Now, right before it shut off, I was able to get inside here and none of my evaporator fans were moving. So, I'm gonna pop that cover off and get a better look inside there. You can kind of see them right up top there. All right, guys, let me get two hands on this real quick. All right, guys, here's a bird's eye view of our evaporator. Just got the cover off. Um, you can tell our fans spin freely I'm assuming they're just not getting voltage from our controller. I have not confirmed that yet. When we do, I'll just go directly to the controller and check right there. 
Um, you can still see there's a little bit of frost on our suction line. Here is our liquid line, TXV, evaporator inlet line. Still have a lot of frost build up inside of our, our evaporator coil right there. Uh, real quick tip on these guys. When you're dealing with these thread setters on the stainless steel stuff, to keep from cross-threading equipment like this, an old guy once told me, take the screw, put it in there, go counterclockwise so you hear it click, and then turn it in. When you hear it click, that means your thread's lined up. Just a, tip, a tech tip of the day, guys. All right, power's on. At 32 degrees. My compressor is running. I have no action on my evaporator fans. I might be able to get in there and check that. I'm not sure. Since we're just dealing with 120, I can just go from one of those to ground and at the very least see if I'm getting control voltage. Careful not to short anything out. Remember our sight glass flashing just a little bit ago? Um, that was most likely due to not having airflow across our evaporator coil. The TXV is still trying to find its balance to try to find its proper superheat. So it was probably just hunting, opening and closing, trying to find that balance. And it couldn't since we have no airflow. So let's pull out this controller and uh, trace some voltage for those fans, all right? All right, guys, here's our controller. It says 24 degrees, and we're still dropping, even though I have the door open, and we still have no fans. Go right up there, no evaporator fans. Now, if we go right back here, you can kind of make sense. There's just a basic schematic on this. Terminal 1 right here is our evaporator fan, Terminal 2 is our compressor, and then number 3 is our incoming power. So let's go ahead and check a few things on this. Keep an eye on my meter, guys, and you'll see what I'm looking at. All right. So our incoming power, 119 volts. Our compressor circuit, 119 volts. Our condensing fan circuit, 0 volts. That's not real good. All right, so let's power this off. Now in this particular setup, there are no safeties that would impede this controller from sending voltage to our condensing fan motor. So just as a test, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my, or excuse me, evaporator fan motors. I think I said condensing fan motors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my evaporator fan wire over to my compressor wire, which, I mean, honestly, it should probably just be there anyway, but I digress.
this will at least let me test this controller. This is a non-emergency situation. They don't really need this cooler. They have backups in place. That's why this one's sitting in the back, of course. So I probably won't leave this temporarily repaired like this. But I will jam this in there and see if we get evaporator fan action. All right, that's a decent fix for now. The power's back on. Hold the power button down, and it should come on. A slight delay before our compressor comes on. A little blue snowflake means our compressor's on. You can tell up there we have evaporator fans going as well. Now they're not going to be able to do much. Since I have that panel off, they can't really pull air through that evaporator coil, so... Turn that off, put the cover back on, get that cover back on so I know we're pulling air up through our evaporator coil, and then we'll um, power it back on and see if we can reach temp the proper way. Alright guys, we've been running for about 10 minutes. Notice our bubbles are starting to slow down. However, there's still still a good amount of bubbling in there. Um, but keep in mind with R404, it is a non-azeotropic refrigerant, just a fancy word meaning it's a blend. So at different ambient conditions, the uh, various blends in that refrigerant will boil off. Now I don't I don't think that's what's going on here. We most likely are just a little bit low on refrigerant or still dealing with a little bit higher load than I'm used to inside the uh, little box here. So we're at, we're at about 20 degrees, nothing too crazy. But just keep that in mind. Before you just throw your gauges on, once you see a sight glass flashing, make sure you have proper airflow through your evaporator and your condenser. And then also keep in mind, for example, if it's, I don't know, maybe the fall at 60 degrees out, you have a high load on the box, that R404 is a non-azeotropic refrigerant, a blend, and it does have a glide, so it can, it can bubble like this and not be low on charge whatsoever. Normally that's under special conditions, but um, now is not the time to really, really get too in-depth with that. but I notice our bubbling is starting to slow down. I'm gonna give it another few more minutes. If we get down to five or 10 degrees and we still have bubbling in there, I think I'm gonna attach my gauges. Now we do have a receiver on this system. So I'm not really too afraid of overcharging it by dropping in a couple ounces to clear my sight glass. So. Let's give it another few minutes and then we'll revisit this issue. So before I go any further and attach my gauges, check my charge and all that, I'm going to get this coil all cleaned up. I'm going to do it in place because trying to remove this condensing section is very difficult. You have to take these side panels off, take this side panel off, take this whole front cover off. Then you can pull the condensing sled out to clean it. So. I have a floor drain nearby, we're just going to clean it in place, we'll let the uh, floor drain take the brunt of everything. Using this new, somewhat new coil cleaner today, it's not too bad, kind of like it so far. Alright, as you can see, our condensing coil is nice and clean now, just cleaned it myself. 
we just turned it on, so as our evaporator fans start to circulate air over that return sensor, our temperature will kind of fluctuate. But what my main focus is is on this sight glass to see if we still have bubbles in this sight glass and see if I need to attach gauges and further diagnose or not. Alright guys, so it looks like we don't have any bubbles in our sight glass anymore. So, let's just watch it get down to temperature. And right now there's no justification for me to put my gauges on this system. Now it does have a receiver, but it is also critically charged. And I don't want to remove any of the refrigerant unless I absolutely have to. So right now, I don't feel the need to attach my gauges. So we are not going to. Alright guys, let's do a quick recap here. We're at 3.7 degrees. Um, this did reach temperature and shut off. I powered it back on just to verify that we do have this little orange fan symbol. That is what comes on when this controller is supposed to be sending power to this fan terminal right there. However, that's not happening. Um, I verified with the manufacturer that it is okay for me to jumper this fan and compressor. Just put them on the same terminal like I did. Uh, it doesn't void the warranty at all. So, we're safe there. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention, if you do run into this situation, make sure you know which wire is which. I know this top wire is to my evaporator fans. I'm going to mark it with a little paint marker. Um, you definitely don't want to hook them up backwards because those evaporator fans do cycle on and off with a uh, condensing, or excuse me, with an evaporator sensor. So you'll have a probably some sort of wonky issue if you get those switched around. But... Other than that, guys, we are all set. We should reach temperature very shortly. All right. Hope you enjoy. Like and subscribe. Shoot me some comments if you want.